What's up you guys? Welcome back to the AOD Swap Torino and we've got a couple of things on the to-do list for this video. Number one thing to do is the linkage. So we got to make the linkage work and make the shifter work in the car. This is the kit that I mentioned in the previous video. So we're going to have to bend this thing up, make it all work. I don't think that would be a big problem to do. And we've also got the ALD cable from low car. So this thing is really nice. We're going to have to make sure that this thing is well adjusted and that the pressure on the ALD trans is is good to go before we drive this thing but yeah a couple of small things to do still but man we are getting near the finish line so let's get started and let's get this thing done all right we've got some instructions out and it is looking pretty simple here this is all that comes with it as you saw it's just a rod with two heim joints and we're just gonna cut it to fit the only thing that it says is to make sure that you flatten it. Once you have the measurements, you flatten this rod so that when you tighten down these two screws, it doesn't you know, twist on you like that. So let's make sure that the car is in park before we even start to measure. Let's see, so yeah, this thing's in park. It's gotta, you gotta press the button for it to go into park, so. There you go. All right, so this is what we've got going on. This is the rod that is uh, cut down and we put a small bend to it. You can sort of see it on this uh, C6 trans, if you see that small bend there. But um, I didn't show me cutting it and fitting it. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You just... Um, bolt on the two heim joints on the shifter end and the transmission end and you put up the uh, rod here and that will pretty much tell you how long you need it to be and you know it's going to be a lot of trial and error you're going to have to take this thing out a lot and put it back in and just have someone keep shifting it to make sure that you know everything is not binding and everything is as smooth as it can be so we found that we need a small bend so you might need a small bend you might not again you will just have to keep trying this out in the car in and out to make sure that everything is smooth and that all the gears are being put into and there is no binding so there you go pretty cool piece with a small bend that will work perfect so let's put this in and i'll show you guys how it works We've got park, reverse, neutral, overdrive, drive, and low. There you go. Bam. And we're out here looking for a oil cooler, transmission cooler. This looks the one uh, possibly fit the bill so i was hoping a little bit bigger one. maybe a bigger one yeah i think we just take a look around and see if we could get a big one but that's not a bad one it's this big we found this f-250 super duty and it's got the uh the one that we're looking for oh right there okay, so don't worry about let's that. check this thing out Oh, it's a little crush in the bottom. Yeah, I got it right here. <sighs> oh, this gonna be fine. There you go. Damn. But that's just the, uh, oh, that's just the frame though, huh? Okay, yeah. Now oh, we should be good. This is a, this is a real nice one right here. Oh yeah, this is gonna be super awesome and it's aluminum so we've got the transmission cooler and man we've cleaned this thing up a little bit and bob is trying to straighten down these uh fins here he's doing a pretty good job it's like a pro man dang but uh should we try to test fit it see how it looks like all right oh Little bend, got a little bend to it. That's all right. 
Gotta massage it in place. Oh, dang. Wow. So we did flip the lines uh, to the, we flipped them out to each side. And this is sort of how it's gonna look like. It's gonna kinda mount like the Super Duty as well. You see like the two tabs on the bottom? Two bolts. And then uh, we just kinda kinda massage it and we'll see right now how we're gonna mount this thing. And here it is, the transmission cooler is finally mounted and it is looking really nice. All that we did is we cut the ends off of the brackets here and we used the original holes from the car and this thing dropped right in. We used some rivet nuts to hold this thing in place and as you can see in the bottom, it is definitely useful to use because there is no way to access the other side of this and using the rivet nuts it adds some threads on here and now it is looking really good just like how the f-250 was mounted but if you can find one at the junkyard i would highly suggest taking the cooler from there because this thing is pretty wide and as you know more surface area equals more cooling but there you go Alright guys, so this is how I'm going to wire the starter I pulled it out to show you guys. I have a diagram that I will also put up, but basically this connection here is going to be the original one. So the big power cable that went to your starter, we're going to put it on this post. And the small little tab here will now go on the other side of your solenoid. So this cable over here will now be switched to this side to a constant power which will go to this side and then the small little tab here will now be on the side over here so it's kind of acting like a second solenoid from this one to this one which is pretty good because you know you won't have that big power jump when you go and start the car so that's one way of wiring it i know you can also bridge these two and then use the original power cable to the connection here and that will also work but again, you know, we have two solenoids, which I think will be a little bit easier on the electrical system. So let's install this thing and man, let's keep going with this AOD install. Here we go. So I picked up a temperature gauge for the AOD. I figured this would be a very good upgrade since I've got the cooler on there and we've got the deep capacity pan and keeping track of the temperatures would be really nice. So we're gonna add this gauge. This pan already came with this temp sending unit, so I'm not really sure what it came out from, but we're just gonna put a new one on here and make sure that we've got all the bases covered. So now we're getting to the most important part of the AOD swap, and it has to do with all the cables and the linkages to make all this work. You're gonna need this bracket from Locar SRK 4000, and this is where the cable attaches to on the back of the carburetor stud. So we definitely need this one. This is the AOD cable right here. And I will have to take this thing apart because I am mounting this one on the bottom instead of the up position. So we're gonna have to take this apart and make it work. There's a very good video by Monster Transmission that I'll link up and he shows it pretty good how to get this all adjusted. I've also got the pressure kit right here. We need to make sure that it's at a certain pressure so that we don't burn this thing up. So let's get started and let's finish this thing.
got the pressure gauge hooked up and as you can see it's hooked up to the middle port there that's the one where that has the tv pressure on there so that's the one that you want it to be hooked up onto and the kit that i bought is this one here from harbor freight on engine oil pressure test kit pretty nice little kit it's got a bunch of fittings on there but the one that came with the hose is the correct one so there you go just make sure it's on the middle one and following this thing up here we can see keep an eye on the line pressure as this thing warms up so i believe the pressure has to be at about 35 so that's where we want it to be we're gonna put the fluid in it warm it up a little bit and then keep an eye on this thing and make some adjustments but that's it and nothing left to do but to fill it up and turn it on let's do it we at the o'reilly's and uh we're we've been clearing out all the stores hunting for mercom 5. we've already got 11 quarts that's 12 13 14 15 quarts so I don't know. We might have to come back or just buy the store at this point, I think, to fill the AOD. <laughs> Hey guys the aod install is complete we've got the tv cable completely adjusted and man it took about 14 quarts to fill this transmission which is just crazy it's just so much fluid this thing took it all and it is now the perfect level but for the aod it is hot out top and cool back bottom so the top line goes into the radiator here and then it goes into the cooler on that bottom line through the grommet the hole that we did here and we're gonna just follow this down here this line here goes through the whole transmission cooler there back out to the top through here and then back into the transmission so this thing is gonna be very well cooled especially with that deep pan as well but ain't nothing left to do to drive this thing and See how she does. Let's do it. All right, here we go. See how she does. Put her in gear. goes one <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and uh, she did have an exhaust leak when I was tuning the uh, TV cable it was just on the back of the head but here we go here we go actually have some gears now wow I'm trying to shift into overdrive here we go this is 
the whole reason I did this for the overdrive on the highway. Oh. There you go. I don't think that was overdrive quite yet. Here we go. Oh! It's at 70. And it just hit the overdrive. You can hear this thing idle down very low. Once it hits that fourth gear. She's shifting real good. Wow. Really, really good. Just confirmed it. 55 to about 60 is when it kicks into overdrive, which is pretty good, I think. You know, I don't you don't want it to be in and out of overdrive while you're on the streets. But she definitely hauls. <laughs> all right guys that is gonna be it as you can see this thing is driving just phenomenal shifting great we're here in laguna beach about 30 miles away from my home and this thing is man i'm just so happy this thing's back on the road and cruising again that's gonna be it i'll see you guys on the next one boom Ooh.